Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, freaks, pimps, and scallywags, everybody, <laughs> barn burners, who, who, whoever you are, shackards, drunkards, you're all welcome. It's the Bull Prediction Sports Media Podcast. I'm that dude with the beard. He's Mr. KC from the A13. And my, oh my, did we have a week of NFL action. Mr. KC, how's it going, my man? Oh, it's going pretty good. It was a pretty interesting day. Found out uh, sports betting will be back to Florida. Uh, Supreme Court ruled that, uh, uh, that we, we should be allowed after we pass these laws that we should be getting a bag of whatnot. So your boy's getting a little excited for Hard Rock Casino to make a reappearance in his life. <laughs> no, that's right. A little chance to win some extra cash is always a good situation. Mm. Man, but speaking of NFL action, week seven is done and in the books, and we saw some wins that were phenomenal, at least for me. Uh, phenomenal for the teams involved, of course. And I mean, dude. Every team that I needed to lose lost, and it's a rarity, except for one team. They, they, they got by by the skin of their teeth, but they got a barn burning whipping coming this weekend. That's unavoidable. Um, dude, let's talk about Brock Purdy and my boy Kirko Chains. Prime time. You got to call him prime time Kirko. I mean, it was a prime time game. <laughs> the man came out. He's, he's really kind of. I think once he heard of the myth, he was like, I've got to, I got to disprove this. Like mm-hmm. he's really stepped up pretty big in them primetime games, at least this season so far and last season. And that's all I ask for people to start pouring more respect to my boy Kirk Chains out here doing this thing, trying to get the Kings of the North back right. And as strange as it is to sound, these dudes still got a chance to win it. And that's the craziest thing is that's always the crazy part about being in the NFC. All it takes is one small run because most of these teams are guaranteed a skid. So <laughs> good night. It's kind of it's kind of swung the door open, in my opinion. So what what are you thinking about the direction the Niners are going in? Two straight losses to two teams who the world thought they would handedly beat, except for me. I mean, what we're really seeing is kind of a regression. You know, when you have a a built team around you, a seventh round pick looks really good. You you heard me last week call him maybe a dark horse MVP candidate, and at this point, we can throw that clean out the window. <laughs> like that conversation has died. You know, I was really considering it as a, at least a possibility. Like, should his name be mentioned? And uh, nope, nope. We're gonna give that a big fat nope. Um, we need some healthy players for the Niners. We truly do. Let's, uh, I like to see. I'm. I don't. I'm not a fan of the Niners, but I always uh, root for them to at least be healthy. You know, I, I like to see healthy teams, good strong teams, and Brock Purdy needs it. <laughs> needs absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. He needs every piece of that team healthy because it's becoming to be shown that without that team healthy and firing all cylinders, even little pieces missing. Even McCaffrey's not playing the same. Uh, it's just it's a different ball game. Yeah, from from head to toe, really. And you you really kind of I mean you're gonna see that with any team that's missing some people. You know, there, it's not gonna be all glittery and gold and whatnot. But man, did it look just so apparent, so apparent for the 49ers when they uh, started facing a, just a little bit of adversity. Yeah, and adversity versus, you know, teams who are scrappy and hungry, and then adversity in the locker room, like I said, dealing with those injuries. Uh, you lose Debo, uh, who's arguably your best playmaker besides uh, what, what they call him, CMC. Uh, right. Dude, like I said, you can see the when he went down, the, the yeah. whole the whole energy of the team changed. Uh, Kittle, man, he he's always, to me, like – He's almost Mr. Irrelevant of that team. 
<laughs> because they got I mean, because they got so much. And I mean, like I said, he's really not a playmaker. He's never been the guy that I'm like, oh man, if I needed a tight end to make a play, George Kittle wouldn't pop up in my mind. I don't yeah, know. I mean, he's he's really just kind of riding on that that name almost, uh, you know, currently. But <laughs> yeah, oh, man. tough Pretty break much. for for the Niners. We've seen it be kind of funky for a lot of different people. You know, oh yeah, you you see some shankiness. Uh, and you, another sh- oh, what was you gonna say, Miss Casey? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna point to like Baker Mayfield, where you've seen like a little bit of a glimmer of hope, and it's kind of uh, coming back down to reality. And I would almost argue the same thing with Jared Goff and the Lions. You know, I've been high on them, and they've got me back to that point where you hear I, that I Eminem. Really want to speak to your name. Yeah. You hear that? They hear that Eminem playing in Detroit. Snap back to reality. Up oh, there goes grass. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, it's so cold mm. in the D. We all know it. <laughs> it's it's disturbing. It truly, truly is. It'll drive you absolutely crazy. These historically bad teams, like I said, they get on these runs, and like I said, they they'll fool the world for a minute. And the the most shakiest mm-hmm. team, and another team who's got another L coming, you know where I'm taking it: Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, who lost to my Patriots. Well, they're not my Patriots; I renounced them, but I still picked them on occasion. But <laughs> nailed mm-hmm. that one. Just roller coaster. It's Philip Rivers, like. <sighs> I don't know how many times I got to say it before people will start believing me. Maybe I need to put on a T-shirt. Because <laughs> this guy, he is just going to simply say, Josh Allen, don't got it. It's going to be all kind of double negatives in it. It's going to be remember- memorable, all that. And then on the back say, he ain't got it because he don't want it. Picture him on a roller coaster with his arms up. <laughs> roller coaster Allen, limited editions. Uh, it's so wild to think about. And he gets so hyped. I mean, Philip Rivers was hyped too uh, mm-hmm. many a times. So you can't really uh, be surprised by that personally. No, but the only thing that makes it so sad is just like when the dude has done absolutely nothing. Like if Josh Allen retired today, his name is not going in any record book. Like no one's going to remember you. I mean, we'll remember you. They still talk about Andrew Luck a little bit, but nobody is nobody's gonna remember your name, dude. It reminds me of Troy when he's out there he was talking about fighting for battle and dying for glory, and he just straight up told dude, that's why nobody's gonna remember your name, dude. Because you're just you're just lame. Like I I hate for it to sound that way, but in in Joe Burrow's short time, he's already eclipsed you as a quarterback. Uh, Deshaun Watson don't even play, and he got the Browns winning, coaching on the sideline. Like it's just so so much for these Bills, and it's 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 one of my top four candidates for blow it up season. It's time to blow it up, and it's really time to start evaluating mm. quarterback. Mm. That's wild to think about because yeah. He's often regarded as that guy. I mean, you almost have to start looking at coaching, maybe. Like, I I don't think you can really give up on Josh Allen, and that's where you're stuck in that Duncan Cross fallacy. I don't don't see why not. Because my thing is, McDermott ain't making him throw them picks. He's not making him fumble the ball on these crazy scrambles. He's probably doing the same thing Stefan Diggs is doing something like, why aren't you throwing this man the ball like the players were calling for? Like Josh Allen, he wants to be Patrick Mahomes so bad, he just wants to get out there and just, oh, I want the game to come to me. I want to play like Pat. I want to improvise. I want to do this kind of stuff. I want to think I got Travis Kelsey. Yeah, throw some picks. Like, um, yeah. you evaluate the – we start with the front office – but how long are we going to cover up this man's mistakes and his inefficiency in most big situations? Like, how, how many times we're we just going to skate over it? Like, they'll roll a, a bum team, then uh, all on ESPN, Josh Allen's back. He, he's an MVP for him. 
did you see the throw he made? Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I just, it's so sickening, dude. Oh, my God. Well, well, folks, you know, we do have our We Told You So video with Josh Allen. It's in the video section. Don't forget to uh, check that out for your weekly reminder that Josh Allen's not that guy. Not and that guy. Uh, it's, it's wild to see such kind of fall off from guys. I mean, I hate to say it, but we're starting to kind of see that with Tua as well. Like, uh, and with the Dolphins, they're just – all of a sudden, facing a lot of uh, uphill battles against teams that they shouldn't. You know, they're beating the easy teams. You can 50-ball the Broncos, but what are you doing against a playoff caliber team? And so Getting far, blown out. Mm, it's not pretty. <laughs> it, reminds me, it reminds me of last year's Niners. I tell you, you beat up all these jabroni Tonys, and then you run across a contender, you get blown out. You ran across yeah. a contender again in the championship game after you played us because that was the only Mexican contender. I don't care what y'all say about Dallas. They just – Dallas wasn't the boys by then. They, they, they was a different team. Uh, but it's a championship game, blown to smithereens. I'm just – I'm when you can only mask these inefficiencies for so long. Like I said, it's only a certain amount. We all know it watch the NFL. We're, we're well through the first quarter. We're, we're in the second quarter, almost nearing the third. And – defenses and coaches and schemes and stuff like that need to continually be fresh and they be praising this dude what's the boy name uh what's his name who's the coach i keep wanting to say brandon staley because he's so terrible that's the first name that always pops into my mind uh who's the dolphins coach what's the boy name glasses oh uh mike daniels Mike Daniels. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So he's supposed to be one of these great coaches. They say he's up there with Andy Reid and the boy Shanahan, but we're not really seeing no mix up. Like the only thing that the Miami Dolphins do is throw slants. Like and it, it's it's been that way. It's their go to. Like and a lot of teams, I don't know if they're just playing too soft in their coverage at first, but they're they've started to figure it out. And like I said, uh, Tyreek Hill even got bottled up last week. So yeah. it's not like it's not like they're this perennial juggernaut that the media was trying to make it seem. It's just I'm like, bro, two is still the quarterback. These are still the Miami Dolphins. Like, what am I the only let me wipe my eyes? Is this reality? Or am I the only person yeah. seeing it? And the problem is, is they're really too good to fix the quarterback position at, through the draft. And what free agent possibility quarterback are you going to get there in Miami? So. When you ain't got no money, especially, right. yeah. Like, ugh, you should have tried. Well, you ain't really ain't got no trade capital. You've traded they everything. Might. They might. They've, they've done a bit. Um, I'd, I'd have, have to double see. check. If, if yeah. they got any kind of I'm, as many trades as Miami have made over the last three seasons, you think they ain't got a pick till 2032. <laughs> well, that's because uh, that that they traded Laramie Tunzel to Houston and oh, just yeah. uh, had a gang of first round picks, you know, stacked up that they it was easy to spend, you know, and uh, they really kind of got Tyree Kill for a, a decent price, you know, it wasn't terribly expensive, you know, and it was just one of those things they they had stockpiled some first and drafted some guys and traded for some guys and. Built in a roster, at least the team that yeah. looks just like the replacements Keanu yeah. Reeves and the boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me they don't. I'm to... uh, oh, Shane believe, Falco and the boys. <laughs> I believe we also have our uh, bold top seven uh, NFL football movies uh, video posted as well. If you folks really want to find out what's our favorite kind of football movies. It's a fun video to watch, uh, especially leading up to the Super Bowl and whatnot. Definitely leading up to the Super Bowl. And you'll see our unison number one favorite football movie of all time. Me and Mr. KC, we hit on that. Like I said, check the list out if you want to know what it is. I was... Check it out. Watch the video. You yeah, tell me what it was one. in the comments. Yeah, because it's, it's a great one. It'll <laughs> do, like I said, the best, pretty much. Um, anyway, folks, let's jump into some Week 8 NFL action. Mr. KC, who do we got first in the uh, 
what is this, the third annual, I guess, Jeff Bezos Bowl. This is the third year Amazon's done had it Thursday night. I think this is the second annual. This is, uh, I think we're going on year two. Yeah, Here's straight boo boo. This is this qualifies. We have the Buccaneers <laughs> going up to the uh, Buffalo Bills. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm picking the Buccaneers to win this game. I believe I picked oh them to win this God. game in the pre in the preseason. I think I'm I picked sure the Bucs to win. Surprised. Yeah, I I, I, sure I, I would. I, if you <laughs> if I had a bet on it, I'd I'd say you did. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I got I got to stick with my gut and go with the Bucks. Uh, dude, the bill, like I said, we we just spent a, a good. 17 minutes talking about the reason why the Bills don't have it. And we came up with several reasons. And mainly, like I said, I, I boil it down to the quarterback and to the coach. Like I said, party, you got to blow that thing up, man. It's time. Mm. Uh, give me the Bucks in this game. They wanted more. They look better as a team than me. Uh, I did terrible last week. And uh, I'm still going to stick to my safe guns and go with Buffalo. Oh. Still, uh, Buccaneers had a real rough game. It was tough to watch against Atlanta. Uh, it, it wasn't the greatest of outings, and it seemed like Atlanta they really could have won by a little bit more than what they did. So I'm gonna stay away from being disappointed and stay away from the Buccaneers. Hey, but you're gonna go with the Bills, which yeah, is lost to the Pro Bowl Mac Jones. That's who you're going with. All right. Put it on the bus. Yeah, and it's and it sucks if you ask me who the better quarterback was, I'm going with Baker in between him and Matt. <laughs> going with Baker, exactly. I was going to ask, but I'm just, nah, okay. I was going to do it, but you're already there. Look, sometimes hmm. we just got to live with our choices, and maybe this be the one you nail right on the head. Uh, I need to, because last week I got destroyed. <laughs> it was not pretty. <laughs> Uh, oh man! Oh, uh, next game we have an exciting one. It is the New Jersey Classic. Mm -hmm. We call this the Battle of the Jersey Shore: Jets <laughs> versus Giants. Actually, Battle I of the Pizza Wrap Glizzy. <laughs> 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 oh man! And um, dude, honestly, in this game. It's a tough pick. I honestly think this is going to be a good game, dude. Uh, I'm still going to go with the Giants. Tyrod has stepped up. He stepped in, and he's got the team looking pretty decent. Um, outside of what Vanilla Vic could do for him, it's still with injury. The Jets, I mean, they're, they're always in it. I, I'll, I'll give them that. They're always in every game so far. They got a real chance to win, but I don't think Zach Wilson overcomes Tyrod Taylor. I'm, I'm going with the Giants. Mm. And I'm going to ride with you. Teacher Talking Sports also, who is a huge Giants fan, also finally got back on the Giants bandwagon this week. You know, <laughs> we've been we've been trying to get him on it, telling him he's a yeah. he's got a good team. Uh, he wants to throw on the towel. I don't blame him. And uh, <laughs> look, let's let's get that Giants. Let's let's go. Let's get a little bit more back on track. Maybe Tyron Taylor can do it. You know, and if if you had to pick, I probably would go with Tyron Taylor over Zach Wilson. So, and even even Vanilla Vic's probably a better quarterback still. Yeah, in my opinion, I mean, he sure is, but. You got to do what you got to do and what you're doing it with right now. And Tyrod has proven why he's still be in the league, man. He's he's playing good football. So man, talk about a good yeah. chance, to, good to idea to have a job a somewhere. Yeah. Right, probably get your job somewhere, maybe in Miami. Uh, I, I <laughs> but I tell you what, if he wants the ring, he can come be a backup for MVP. Bad, you know. Right, he, he sure can, because uh, Blake Bortles. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> right. I invite him to the barbecue. I was still hoping Chad Henney's on the speed dial just in case. Like, please, man. Chad, we, should, we we need a series, man. Just one. That, that ain't no lie. Man. Next on the list, we got a banger of a matchup. This one, I'm actually excited to see which way you go with this pick. 
It's going to be the Jaguars at Pittsburgh Steelers. Ooh. Who's winning this game? Oh, you want to talk about a tough game. Both of my fantasy quarterbacks, by the way, I have both. Mm. I have Kenny P and my boy, uh, Android 17. I was about to call him Jay Law, about to change his name because he's the <laughs> lawless one. Because he's the prince. He can do whatever he wants to do. Uh, I don't know, man. Them Steelers, oh, are your windows tight? Did you lock up? Down? How's the weather in Jacksonville? How do, do people just walk up to the front? How's it like in Florida, Miss Casey? You know, build with me for a second. Do people just walk up to people, the front doors open all night, windows, getting that good Florida oh, air breeze? Oh, you you get shot doing something like that around here. Ooh, okay. So kill, if that's the case, if that's the case, these Jags might be strapped when these Steelers come. So I'm about to go with the Prince that's promised. Uh, oh, it is in <laughs> Pittsburgh. It is oh, in it's in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Oh, I thought it was yeah. in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm going to the Steelers. You're going to the Steelers at home. Man. Steelers at uh, home. They've just been winning, too. I've got to do. Yeah, that's what's And it's at home? This is, yeah. I'm going with the Steelers. Kenny P. And I'm going to start him that game. I'm going with Kenny P. Mm. I'm going with you the Prince that's promised. Um I'm going to, I'm going to go with the better quarterback in the matchup. And I personally believe that's Lawrence KP's winning games though. Tomlin is going to end up uh, once again. <laughs> once again I, know. <laughs> uh, I really thought he was not. I thought I, I didn't even want to publicly say it because I did last year. Right. It blew up in my face. So I was like, you just, it's, it's like when you want to make fun of that bully, but you'd be saying it behind his back when he ain't right. he can't hear you. Like, <laughs> you you ugly. You, right. Your mama ugly too. Your mama ugly, yeah. right? Exactly. What was that? Nothing. 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 Right. Uh, no, man. Let me say that. What you talking about? You good? You good? No, right. Man. You good? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Oh man. Uh, Dude, I like your pick though, man. Uh, like I, said, I still think the Jags. They're going to finish second in the AFC, but they got to get another loss on them. So here it comes because the Steelers got to win the North, baby. Let's Man, go. <laughs> they've got an upset written all over them, too, with them Steelers. Oh, another <laughs> NFC East battle. Here we go. We got the Eagles versus Commanders. Can the Commanders pull off the upset? Honestly, they can. Uh, but will they? No. I'm going with the Eagles. I'm definitely going with the Eagles. Uh, any other time, anybody who knows, watch the show, you know, I would love to pick the commanders in a heartbeat. Um, I'm a You're commander. Not to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a commander role. I roll with them, but it's just yeah. something. They, they, they just need something else. I think I think the enemy needs to be the head coach. And it's time to really give that team a fresh face and a fresh start going forward. I think the Ron Rivera's time is done. Uh, it's time to move on, uh, move the enemy up. Get him, uh, once they fire Brandon Staley, bring him on as a co as a coordinator. You get you a nice little team going. Uh, Eagles all the way. Fly, Eagles, fly. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I feel like if the, the – Reds or the not the Reds, excuse <laughs> me, folks. Right. Uh, the don't commanders, cancel us. yeah, don't cancel us. So I'm just old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the, the commanders, uh, they really just need to get an offensive line, and they'll be a solid team. They got it, they got to get the trenches down, and until they do that, they're not going to beat the Eagles or do well moving forward. Right, they'll always just be that scrappy team that reminds you of the Texans of the NFC. Just yell, hey, we're here. We can probably yeah. win. You better be careful. Let me go. Where the coach? <laughs> exactly. Oh, God. Gardner mm. Minshew. He's reaching his limit, though. Uncle Rico's running out of juice. But anyway, we'll talk about that nice. soon, too. Mm -mm -mm. And next on the list is another interesting game. It's going to be Ram versus them Cowboys. <laughs> and I've learned from this season and last season that when I pick the Rams, they just don't win. 
And then even when I don't <laughs> pick them, they just don't win. So I'm going to go with the Cowboys because I've learned my lesson. <laughs> the Rams just won't win. Yeah, I, I well, just don't know why. You got a, you got a quarterback who who's arguably really the second best in the NFC in all reality if you boil the papers down. On paper, exactly, if you boil it down. But good night, man. They just – Sean McVay, I, I respect that man as a coach. He's all He's brilliant, dude, but – it's, it's hard to p- keep this thing pieced together when y'all traded for so much and your money's so tight and you're still trading people out and kind of wasting Aaron Donald, unfortunately. And I wish we could have got him. But anyway, I'm going with the boys. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I learned the Rams lesson last weekend. I'm not falling for it twice. It's just you not happening. should have learned from my example. I try to get, you see? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm taking that lesson. <laughs> I was like, oh, you could have told me this last week, but here we are. All right, all right, coach. Let me – all right, X that out. Right. No more no more Rams in this house. Almost like the Lions, I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. I don't know, man. I think you're going to be forever in that raincoat with that boom box outside that line window playing that low song. It's just something about them that keeps pulling you back. Somebody cue the chingy. Every time he try to leave, something keeps pulling him back. back. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> uh, speaking of bad things, let's go on to the next game. We have the Vikings going to Green Bay to play the Packers. And I am going with the Kings of the North who are rejuvenated, refreshed. Kirk chains in this situation. Yeah, let's. Let's do it. I'm going. I'm right there with you. I've talked uh, super trash on Jordan Love all season, yeah. and uh, I believe I'm going to continue to do it. I've uh, I've missed on a few quarterbacks, and I've called a few of busts that weren't. But it looks like it looks like I'm nailing this one. You're kind of nailing it. Might have got the old Jordan Love right. Yeah. So far, uh, you're almost there. Because um, yeah. the, the, the jury's the light's still on, but he started after off this strong. weekend, it could go out. We got to see because this is adversity. This is a rivalry game at the, at the end of the day, too. So, yeah, I'm going with primetime Kirko Chains, though. You know, I'm going with my boy Kirko. Yeah, he's been doing it without uh, Jefferson, which is kind of pretty wild to think about. That boy Osborne, they got has been he's been catching. They, like I said, they got some got like the offense. It was I just, like I said, it just took a second to click, man. They need the running game though, but we'll talk about that more later. He definitely needs running game. Yeah, for sure. Now let's talk about some subpar teams. We got some uh, boo 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 boo. Ooh. We got your favorite Atlanta Falcons facing the Titans. <laughs> and let's go. You already know. I don't even think I need to talk on this segment. Is Ryan Tannehill still the quarterback in Tennessee? Uh, no, actually, this week it's going to be a uh, split between the boy, Will Levis Malik. and Malik uh, Willis. All the more reason why I'm going with the birds. It was already a trash situation yeah. for them, and now it's even worse. Let's go, Atlanta. Like I said, y'all still got a chance to win the South. 10-7 and seven is still... Uh, 11 and 6, 10 and 7 is still obtainable. Still can, still can get you a playoff spot. Let's do it, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. They uh, messed up and said they, they plan on playing both Will Levis and Malik Willis. And it, you always know if you're playing two quarterbacks, you ain't got one. You ain't got <laughs> a single one. You better, you need Derrick Henry. To pull off a lifetime type performance, I mean, he needs to have 300 yards rushing out the rip, and then hopefully five touchdowns. Because even if he get 300 yards, he might not score at the red zone. Who knows? Goodness, that team is so terrible. They're so terrible, and it's kind of sad to see. I feel bad for DeAndre Hopkins, and apparently they've been shopping him. So it'll be interesting to see come trade deadline. What happens to D Hop? Even though that contract suggests might not be the easiest guy to move. Right. 
want too much money at the end of the day. At the end of the day, these dudes, they're uh, they're wanting their money. Um, if championship was really important to D Hop right now, he could have just took a deal that would have landed him in a championship team right here in the Middle West, who's a humble little team, farm country, farm town almost, humble people, humble beginners. He yeah, could have been he eating barbecue and winning championships. Yeah. I was listening hey. to country music in Tennessee. Man. Pour me another shot of whiskey. Man, what are, they, what are they even eating in Tennessee? They got a famous food. I remember they tried to say claim they can make barbecue, but we all know that's the lie. So they uh, got a little barbecue in Tennessee. It's not in Nashville. It happens to be in Memphis. But of um, where everything in yeah, Tennessee I, is I, worth it. <laughs> I thought it was absolutely wild that a place in Nashville claimed to have better barbecue than Kansas City, and Nashville ain't even got better barbecue than uh, than Memphis. Right. So as a well traveled man. And as a fat kid, it ain't it ain't Nashville. It ain't I promise even, you that. Right. It ain't even close. It's not yeah, y'all got good, good. You got good and hot chicken, and it's just chicken dipped in hot sauce. Right. Like, I've been doing that my yeah. whole life. Man, so. who ain't got Frank's Red? Who ain't been right. dipping chicken in it? Like, well, you put a lot. It just sounds good on a com- on a commercial. Yeah. Nashville hot. Yeah. Thanks for but the heartburn. I appreciate but it. But it sound like K- Kentucky hot sound better than me. But that's right. a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Let's get back into football. We got the Patriots going to uh, Miami to play the Dolphins. And let's do it. I'm going with the Pats over the Dolphins. It's skid time for Miami, like I've been saying. You've been no. seeing it. You've been feeling it. You know it's on the horizon. And they got a pro bowler running into town who just beat the brakes off of Phillip Rivers. It's time. Let's it go is pass. not. It is the fence. This is what you call a get right game. This is one of those games where they decide so to score. Get you right back again. down to the depths of the cellar where you belong. Mm, need to be winning, boys. We need to be winning fence. Come this on, two of third loss. After this, oh, I think they're the already. At, I think they're already at three. I think they. Uh, they I think they need to get right back on the schedule. Is what they need to finna do. Yeah, so let's let's go. Like, don't embarrass me, Dolph. I've already got one bad relationship. I can't afford to. <laughs> okay, Dolphins. I need you to win. It's uh, a tall task. Is it in New England? It is, is in Japan? Miami. It is oh, in Miami. Yeah. They like to lose at home. Let's so, yeah, them up. It, it's it's not very hot this week though, so maybe it is Ooh. compared to the New England winners. Boston, it's some it comes some Boston football. <laughs> they come right. take it I'm, I'm gonna have to find out if it's cold up there. Right. See if they you mess them up a little bit. <laughs> All right, well, now now we really got some bad football games back to Ooh. back. Must be the we Raiders these next to. Or trash. We have the Saints playing the Colts. Woo. Man, which trash team is going to win this game? Garden, do you got one more in you? I think he does. What is this? This is this is week eight, right? I said he only got this eight weeks in him. And technically, this is be week six playing for him because he didn't play the first few. Yeah, give me, I'm going with Gardner. I'm going with Uncle Rico and the Colts. Beating the Saints. Me too. I'm right there with you. Me too. I'm going. This Um, that because I just feel like the Saints seem like you. There's no obvious win against the Colts. They're a tougher team than they let on, and this is going to be one of those games to go. People go, huh? Are they good? Is Gardner (laughs) Minshew okay? No, he's a backup. He's Mm -hmm. a serviceable backup. Another yeah, guy I would take. No, I would not. I would, I don't want nothing to do with him. Yeah, is the backup out? Please. Mm. I don't I don't want to see him play. And Gardner Minshew is gonna play. The the football god allows Gardner <laughs> Minshew. Oh, it's, yeah, it just happens. Right? It's gonna yeah, happen. I, I don't, oh, I, 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 well, I don't want to see what it takes for him to get play time in Kansas City. And uh, I'm just not for it. <laughs> oh, God. No well, I don't know, me. man. Chad Hilly averages one playoff game. True. I don't, I don't need that voodoo <laughs> yeah. either. 
Let's hope Blake averages zero. Man. All right, next boo boo game. Which steaming pile was worse than the other? Mm-hmm. We have the Texans playing the Carolina Panthers. Oh, we, we love which trash fire is burning bright there. We got the Texans winning this game. Uh, yeah. CJ Stroud, who should have been the number one pick, is going to show the Panthers why he should have been the number one pick. Could have been that guy, had the opportunity, is not. So let's, uh, but I'm right there with you. I think the Texans are better than the Panthers, at least. Not a great team, but definitely better than the Panthers. Right. By far. I don't even, I really don't even think it's close, but any given Sunday, they might score 10. Who knows? We'll see. No, I know we should have done a news video on this next game. We have the Cleveland Browns playing this in Seattle, playing the Seahawks, who just got Frank the Clark Shark. Or Shark the Clark, uh, whatever. You know what I'm saying. Same thing. Yeah. And it's a move that, I mean, does, I mean, I guess it could make sense, but, I mean, I like it just so he can go back to Seattle. Gino can go ahead and get that extra little buff that'll go ahead and boost my Seahawks pick to them getting to the Super Bowl because we know he's probably not getting any sacks until playoff time. So we just got to see what's going on. Or maybe he, maybe when he gets back there, he gets that old rush and feeling back in his blood. Just, you know, maybe it starts coursing through it again. But, um, dude, it's the Seahawks. So Yeah, I'm going with happens. the Seahawks too. And I just want to add, if you look at one of those – Super Bowl storylines. Frank Clark used to play for Kansas City and now he's with Seattle. And all of a sudden, someone's bold prediction of Seattle, Kansas City Super Bowl comes true. So just keep an eye on them kind of things. That's what I'm saying. What better story? That's just on top of it. Like I said, you got an old AFC West rivalry, a, a, a mm. matchup we haven't seen in years take place mm. at the grandest stage of them all, dude. And then implications on both sides of the D line, it'll be perfect. Be absolutely. It'll be interesting. It'll be a good. It's going to be a good game. Yes, sir. And now we got a game of two on. Underperforming teams, teams that are not quite where we want them to be. We have the Cincinnati Bengals mm. playing the San Francisco 49ers. This is an interesting one to see who you take in this one. Oh, I'm taking Cincinnati in this game. Oh, really? Joe Cause... Burrow might not be playing, I think. I think there's questions. Well, let me put an asterisk next to this, Dan, because it's, okay. it's, a, it's a trash bowl. If Burrow plays, they're winning because uh, Purdy's trash. But if Burrow don't win, I have no idea who's going to play in instead, and that just is even worse. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to asterisk this thing. Tentatively, I'm picking the Bengals. Okay, that's fair enough because I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on the injury report, so I can't say for sure. Um I, I don't remember what I read, so I'm not going to uh, quote myself as perfection. But I'm still one way or the other. I'm going with the Niners. I know. So I'm going to go Niners asterisk true. Good. So when they take that L, they can just be mm-hmm. another one just fresh right out the oven. I tell you what, they lose this game. I'm not doing it no more. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing it again. Three in a row, I believe. Yeah, they I got just, their I, name on it. Yeah, after three in a row, I start doing, okay, you you, you fooled me once. Shame on you. I can't mm-hmm. be fooled again. Okay. And the Bengals want that game if they even think that they could try to make it to the playoffs. At the very minimum, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah. At the very minimum, it's, we're starting to get to that point with the Bengals where they just can't. You don't. You don't want to put yourself in a four-game hole or something like that. Man, it's, just, it's hard to get out of. Yeah, and we're about at that halfway point, so right. time That's, to you got to get it together. Yeah, clamp down. Like I say, if you miss it now, it's a wrap. Niners. Y'all can afford to lose this game again and 
then y'all still be in contention. Y'all be around which I was last year. I mean, y'all, y'all try anyway. Let's go with the Bengals, man. Trash bowl. I'm going with the Bengals tentatively. I'm right there with you. Next game on the list, the biggest lock of all week. Oh yeah, it must be the boys, the real boys. <laughs> It is the real boys. We have the Kansas City Chiefs traveling to their mountain home in <laughs> Mile High Arrowhead. I'm trying to, to tell you, a- AFC West West. <laughs> yes. yes. On the schedule, it says the Chiefs are away, but they are officially at the <laughs> mountain retreat for yeah. a uh, what we like to call a better than a buy. Right. And a fun weekend of skiing, uh, relaxing by hot fires, maybe consuming some medical hors d'oeuvres that are locally served, and also (laughs) getting to see Sierra, the highlight of Denver. (laughs) Where you can stop by your favorite restaurant to find out they can't cook. (laughs) Oh, God. This is going to be. Well, you call an Uber and you can't get a ride. Um, exactly. Yeah, this, we know who wins this game. It's it's almost a, a tale. Is, a, what they say, a tale is old as time. Once upon a time, there was a franchise called the Denver Broncos. They had Mega Mind as quarterback, who was on his last leg and was gifted a Super Bowl by Roger Goodell. Mega Mind decided to retire, and it was nothing but dark times upon the land. <laughs> I, I have a bold prediction mm-hmm. that I want for the Kansas City Chiefs fans, and that is MVP MV Pat never loses to the Broncos in his whole career. It's he's never gonna he's not gonna do it one time. It's not gonna happen one time in his whole career, and it's gonna be the mo- most unbelievable stat ever. He's he's getting close. He's working on the longest streak ever against one team that's 17 so he's he's working on it he's he's chopping away one step at a time Mm -hmm. and my boy project pat could be the one to do it uh but yeah shout out to you broncos for being so terrible i love to see it nothing fills my heart with joy more than seeing the Broncos lose, especially when the team on the other side is wearing red and white. Um, it, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's almost, if I knew what taking ecstasy was like, I'm sure this is it. <laughs> because it's just, nothing makes me happier than to see the Broncos lose. <laughs> right. Good night. Next, next game on the list. This is a battle of the birds. We have the Ravens facing the Cardinals. And if we've learned anything about the Cardinals, that they're still the Cardinals. Ravens all day. Yeah, that one feels pretty lockish to me, too. I feel like they just got to. I, yeah, <laughs> there's no other way around. There's not another pick. It's the Ravens. Yeah. Then uh, we have a Sunday night game that's not very good this week. It was good last week, not this week. We have the Chicago Bears traveling to Los Angeles to play the Chargers. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the Bears in this game because the Chargers are working on their third loss in a row, just like a few other teams that we talked about earlier, and it's going to be a trend. Uh, let's go Bears. Uh, I don't think Hurt is. I don't think Hurts is playing. Is he? Is Hurts playing? Uh, you mean Fields? Fields, yeah. Sorry. Uh, he could be. I had to double check, but I'm confident in the backup. I mean, they're playing the Chargers. What is there to really worry about? Mm. I think I'm going to go with the Chargers. I believe they're heavy favorites. And on paper, the Chargers should win this game with relative ease. Like, this should be a safe, easy game. But it has – the Bears play football, man. They're an underrated team. 
Yeah, let me stick with the Chargers. I'm... I would say because after they beat the Chargers, Chargers will be two and five. Bears will move to three and five. Mm. Like I said, um, staring down the barrel. I, I, yeah, we'll go with the Bears on this one. Got to do it. And speaking of bad Sunday night games, we have a bad Monday night game. <sighs> we have the Las Vegas Raiders traveling to the worst city in America, Detroit Lions. And this is going to be my first official. I don't care who wins. <laughs> I, just, I just, I just don't. I, I don't care, uh, folks. Y'all can pick for me in the comments. Uh, pick for me. That, that's that, how much I don't care. I, <laughs> Detroit. Oh God. Yeah. Which is a real nice way of him saying, "I really want to pick the Raiders, but I don't want to take the L." So I'm going to go ahead. And pass it off. No, no, buddy. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, and, and I yeah. refuse to pick Detroit because yeah. they can lose too. Matter of fact, they're gonna tie. Boom. Gonna t- boom. The hey, first tie I'm, of the season. Yep. Yeah. Can't uh, can't give you an L for not getting the tie either. <laughs> we, we, we we call that the the tie is the official get out of jail free card in this show. So we're gonna allow him to use it. He's earned it. He had a monstrous what eleven and two week last week. So yes, sir. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let him slide with that one. I'm going with Detroit. I'm not afraid. I got my boom box out. <laughs> and it's sad because Lions fans, uh, you know, we've there's a uh popular Lions uh YouTube channel, uh Lions Syndicate that watched our Lions prediction video, which I have them going to the playoffs, and magically that still is not supporting the Lions enough. Not so enough. even with my boom box, I'm not accepted in Detroit. And uh I've been to someone that's been to Detroit, I don't care. Like I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I'm not going there. Like right. uh, it's definitely not a uh vacation <laughs> destination. Right. Nobody goes to Detroit. Everybody yeah. leaves Detroit. But guess where they do go? Florida. So, exactly. how about that Detroit? Yeah, about that. Man. And that's week oh. eight. That's week eight, folks. Ending with a tie on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that'd be wild, dude. Oh. But, and the, the nice thing about the tie is if they do tie, you get the win. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And they're both just so terrible. Uh, so terrible. Like I said, the Lions, they, they won their Super Bowl. That day yeah. is done. Like I said, so good night. Oh, Goodbye. It definitely feels a little peakish. Yeah, it doesn't definitely. it? Don't, like I said, that, that was it for them. That's the highlight of the season. It's a wrap. Mm. It's sad but true. Can y'all hear the P on that? It's a rap. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, somebody called Chris Kringle. This thing is wrapped up. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of wrapped up, we appreciate you folks, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. This is our week eight predictions. We are bold predictions. Again, live every Wednesday. Shout out. To you on Rumble, if you on Rumble right now, you are watching us live, and we see you being all stars. 80 viewers last week watching live. We are stoked about it. Shout out Rumble, big Let's shout go. out to Rumble, man. Like I said, we do this for y'all, we do it for the fans, especially the active fans, man. We love y'all, we appreciate y'all. Don't forget to leave comments, tell us about your favorite team. Give us some of your picks. We'll feature it on the show. Once again, as tradition, though, he's Mr. KC from the A13. I'm that dude with the beard. Sayonara. Peace. Good night. Peace out. <laughs>